One of the new exhibitions opening tonight, a display of contemporary Bulgarian printmaking. Now we're with curator Lubas Kalan, who's going to give us a tour of this uh, printmaking e exhibition. Where should we start? Well, let's start here just because it's a very good example of one of the um, techniques um, uh, under the umbrella of Intaglio, which is dry point. Uh, and basically, um, it, uh, it's, it's a technique uh, where you can see you can get very detailed uh, The detail's images. incredible. Uh, this is the lino cut uh, again, so we it's under the umbrella of uh, relief printing. It's, it's a very striking, contrasty yes. image yes. that has nowhere near the line subtlety, subtlety and, and tone, uh, tone of that. Yes, yeah. and transitions. And also, I can show you one really exceptional uh, uh, lino cut print, which will be over there. Okay, that's cool. So, okay. So again, this is an amazing example of wood engraving. Uh, again, like the lines are incised into wood surface. It's the right. end grain oh, uh, okay. for a bigger detail. But when you look at uh, all of these lines, so every every particular line was oh, incised okay. very carefully. Each one is carefully yes. gouged into the wood. Yes. Now we're with Briar Craig, one of the instructors at UBC Okanagan. You played a big part in bringing this exhibition here. How significant is it to have the show here? Oh, it's incredible. I mean, um, printmaking is a wonderful um, uh, area of art practice because works on paper are really easily shipped around the world, quite inexpensive. You, know, you can't really ship um, paintings and things like that. So being able to see what's happening in the last five years in, in a foreign country is great. But one of the things that I think is really interesting is that there's no photography. I mean, where North American art and North, North American printmaking is really dominated by photographic processes, yet there's much more kind of a, a grassroots tradition in, in Eastern Europe. And so I think it's, there's a really great display of all kinds of different drawing going on. And I, again, I think that's really wonderful for students, but also for the general public, because it's not stuff that you would necessarily see being generated by Canadians. Now, another exhibition that's opening here tonight at the Vernon Art Gallery is from the Sukhanshoot Youth Center. And the first artist that we're going to talk to, Clara Hovan. Now, tell me a little bit about your art. This, we're starting off with something very digital here. Yes, um, this is supposed to be the future of Suk and Shoot. We want to have a uh, sort of interactive um, website teaching about the different culture, for instance, the Metis culture, which is mine. And you've got a really cool uh, display down here as well. So you've gone from digital to 3D here. Yeah, it's um, sort of like a, a set design. So this is the Métis um, Red River Settlement. Sorry. So this is the past, this is the future. We're kind of jumping around here a little bit. And we've got a, a sash. I know yeah, of the, sash. the sash play a big part in the Métis yes, culture. Yes, there is a lot of symbolism in here, the different colors, the fusing of two different cultures, the French and the Cree. And over here, the intricate and very time-consuming oh, beadwork. Oh, yes, definitely. The Métis were mostly known for their wonderful intricate um, details in beading. So how long did, you, did that take you? That took me two months. <laughs> <laughs> That's fabulous. <Two> months. <laughs> now we're talking to Pierre Richard. Now Pierre, you've got some great photography here. Thank you. Uh, how long have you been taking pictures? I've been really interested since like grade seven and I've been taking photos ever since grade seven to grade 12. The interesting use of like a multiple image. I see on this one here, you've got like a ghostly figure in there. Yeah, it represents past and present. I have my model hawk Mendoza, and in the present he's sharpening the bow knife, and then in the past he's sharpening the bow knife in his regalia. Now we're joined by painter Mary Rose Cohen. Uh, tell us about uh, this, this painting first. Oh, this is my acrylic painting, and it represents the land, because I think people get their identity from the land. And this painting represents the past, and it shows a really traditional woman with her basket and her traditional outfit. And then this is the present, and as you can see, she's more moder modern, and she has like the sweater and everything, and not traditional clothing. And right here is supposed to be the future, and like we don't know what's going to be in the future, like if we're still going to have our berries and our traditional food, because there's so much like buildings being built and pollution and stuff. So here you've got like a forest path, and you've added uh, actual wood to it. Yeah, it's like kind of like past, present, and future, because that was one of the themes. So I kind of did that one as the past because there's no really cement and there's just kind of like little dirt trails. And then in the next one, this would be the present? Yeah, they're kind of like sidewalks and like trash cans and all that stuff are being added like you're walking through a park. And then in the final one, that's, this is the future. These are futuristic trees? Yeah. <laughs> what, what did you make these out of? Um, I just kind of found this 
fabric laying around. I just didn't want to just leave silver trees, make it not so similar to the first one. So this work, As the Tears Fall, is the sketch for Patrick Dobsloff's work that we see here. Now, this, you're saying you're inspired by manga. It's a very comic book influence here. Uh, yes, it is. And it's What very, is it about manga that, that draws you to it? It's the fine lines. It's the contrasts. It's how it can be either completely shaded or not shaded at all. It's, I just love how sharp it is.